For your wife, is it, sir? No, no, it's for a friend. Oh. Oh, well, I'm sure you want only the best for your friends, sir. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Uh, but I must consider the price. Oh, quite. Quite, um, something in our middle price range, perhaps, sir. Uh, how much would that be? Fifteen pounds, sir. Oh, dear. I had in mind something rather less expensive. Oh. Less expensive? What is the cheapest to do? Six pounds, twelve shillings and six pence. Ah. That is much better. We shall have to charge extra for fitting. Oh, I see. Nothing off the peg, so to speak? Well, if you're not too particular about the size, uh, you could have this one here for five pounds. Oh, yes. Yes, that'll do splendidly. It'll cost you another ten pounds for the usual services. That won't be necessary. I have made other arrangements. I see. Then I shall have to make a delivery charge. That won't be necessary either. I have a car outside. I'll take it with me. You take it with you. Mr. Reader, is that all the breakfast you've eaten? I have had an ample sufficiency, thank you, Mrs. Hoochin. Nothing. You eat nothing. Ah, oh, well, I've got more ideas about what's putting you off your food. Uh, never fear, Mrs. Hoochin. I assure you I am in good health. It's not your health I'm worried about. I've seen you in the mornings waiting for that girl on your way to work. Oh, she's young enough to be your daughter, Mr. Reader. Now, come on, eat up your kidneys. How many times must I tell you never to go investigating on an empty stomach? Oh, dear. The poor man. <gasps> they found pieces of his body at warping. Oh, look. There's another of those missing persons. Have you seen that, Mr. Reader? There's another of those missing persons. I know, Mrs. Hoochin. I know. No. Well, you see, it was at least six months ago. I advertised, but nothing happened. So my godfather suggested I came to see you. Your uh, godfather? Uh, yes, the Bishop of Thrapston. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Uh, I was at school with him, do you know. Dear old Basha. Always knew he'd get on. Marvellous shop with the catapult. Uh, he's well, I trust. Oh, yes, he is very well. Good. Well, I, give uh, me my regards. Rita! Oh, oh, do uh, forgive me. I have to prepare a brief this morning. Uh, you'll excuse me if I get an assistant to take the details. Of course. I, I'm sorry to be such a nuisance. Oh, not at all, my dear child. Rita! Uh, you called, Sir Jason? Yes, sir. Uh, this is Mr. J.G. Reader, Miss Martin, an able assistant. Uh, her godfather, the Bishop of Thrapston, suggested that Miss Martin came to see us about a certain matter. Uh, the disappearance of our aunt, Mrs. Athbell Martin? That's right, but how did you know? We make it our business to be informed. Uh, Reader, take this lady into your office, will you, and record the details. Uh, I will go into the matter personally as soon as I've finished my brief. <laughs> It's terribly kind of you, Sir Jason. I've been so worried. I, I really haven't known. Uh, naturally. Uh, now, if uh, you'll excuse me. Uh, this way, Miss Martin. Uh, please be seated. I'm afraid this chair is not very comfortable. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm used to hard chairs. My aunt was not a woman who wasted money on luxuries. But I take it she was not uh, short of money? Oh, on the contrary. But... Uh... But what, Miss Marty? Well, now she's gone. Uh, the money seems to have gone with her. Well, surely the bank could have... There's very little there. It's all in investments. We lived off her monthly dividends. Now they've stopped coming, I, I really don't know how I shall manage. In what company is Mrs. Martin's money invested? Oh, I don't know. Uh, she was always most secretive about it. Oh? 
It was something to do with a South American arms syndicate. But I can find no record of it amongst her papers. And she never mentioned the names of any of the persons concerned? No. Oh, oh, there was one name. I remember it because it was a funny foreign name. I saw it on the bottom of a letter. Oh, I wasn't prying, really. I'm sure you weren't, Miss Marty. Uh, what was the name? Uh, De Silva. De Silva. Was your aunt in the habit of going away? Yes, uh, but only for holidays. I'm so looking forward to my holiday. Everything's planned. Miss Bellman, uh, before you go away, would you do me the honour of accompanying me to the theatre? Oh, I should like to, Mr. Reader. Would I sound awfully forward if I suggested tomorrow? It's the only evening I have free. Not at all. I'm delighted you can accept my invitation. I thought to play the Green Goddess with that admirable gentleman actor, Mr. George Arliss. Oh. I think that would be suitable. Oh, I should like to see that. I shall confirm what time they raise the curtain and let you know. Ah. Thank you. When are you going away? On the 2nd. I had hoped to go by the weekend, but I can't leave before my dividends arrive. Dividends, Miss Bellman? I had no idea you were a woman of property. Hmm. I receive £10 on the 1st of every month. You are most fortunate. Yes. My father left me a cottage. Well, I wasn't able to use it, so I sold it for £1,000 and invested it. £10 a month. You are drawing 12% interest. A wonderful investment. What is the name of the company? I'm afraid I can't tell you that. Well, I'm sorry. I no, did not mean to be. No, it's not that I wouldn't tell you, but uh, well, it's a secret. I quite understand. No, you don't. I had to sign an agreement not to divulge the name of the company. Well, that is somewhat unusual, if you don't mind my saying so. Is it? Well, I don't know about these things, but I understand all the shareholders were asked by the syndicate to sign it. Indeed. Reader! Yeah. Oh, there you are. Long lunch hour. I was talking to Miss Martin until past one, Sir Jason. Oh, I see. In the paper, there's another missing person reported. What do you make of these disappearances? Well, you can't make any positive out of a negative, Sir Jason. Uh, what? London is full of people who live such commonplace lives. The wonder is more of them don't disappear in order to do something different from what they're accustomed to do. Well, four is a pretty low average for a big city. Seventeen in eight months. Seventeen? Are you sure? I've been looking into it. Oh. They are all people with a little money, private means, all drawing an income that was paid to them on the first day of the month, which in itself is somewhat unusual. Uh, Fifteen of them were at any rate. I have yet to verify the other two. Well, you'd better do that. Of course I will, Sir Jason. I've also ascertained that they were all most reluctant to divulge where their revenues came from. And none of them appear to have any personal friends or relatives, um, except Mrs. Martin. Well, what do you think's happened to them? I should imagine they were murdered. Oh, reader, you're in one of your gear moods today. Step this way, please. If, as you say, it's really important, you better wait here. It shouldn't be a minute or two before he is back. Thank you. I'll ask you not to disturb anything while you're waiting. Good evening, Mrs. Hutchin. Oh, Mr. Reader. There is a young lady waiting to see you. I trust you will not be staying long. Your dinner is ready, and braised liver does not improve with keeping. I'm sure not. I'll let you know as soon as I'm ready. But, Mr. Reader... Uh, I... Thank you, Mrs. Hoogin. Good evening, Miss Bellman. What are you doing here? Well, I have thought about what you said today, and... If it is really important, then I will break my word and tell you the name of the company with whom I have invested my money. That is most wise, Miss Bellman, most wise. I cannot stress too strongly the importance of this matter. It is the Mexico City Investment Syndicate. 
they have offices in Portugal Street? Oh, yes. Do you know them? How did you come to hear of them? I had a letter from their manager, uh, Mr. De Silva. Have you got the letter? No, but I have a letter from their lawyers, which I have kept. Uh, may I see it? Yes, certainly. Oh, dear. Oh, shall I read it? Would you be so kind? Uh, dear Madam, Re-Mexico City Investment Syndicate. We act as lawyers to the above, and as far as we know, it is a reputable concern. We feel it only due to us to say we do not advise investments in any concern that offers such large profits, for usually there is a corresponding risk. Uh, we cannot, of course, as lawyers, guarantee the financial soundness of any of our clients, but as far as we've been able to ascertain, the syndicate conducts a genuine business and enjoys very sound financial backing. Yours faithfully, Rachel and Rachel. Seems very straightforward. But you have never met Mr. De Silva? No, I saw Mr. Bracher. His office is in the same building as the Syndicate. Uh, what happened? I left my application form for shares with him and he passed it on to the Syndicate. Later, I had a letter from Mr. De Silva accepting my investment. And that is when you sent the money? Yes. And you have received your dividends regularly ever since? Oh, yes. On the first day of every month. I help you? I want to see Mr. De Silva of the Mexico City Investment Syndicate. There appears to be nobody in the office. I wonder if you could possibly help me. Oh, uh, well, he only comes in about once a week. I, I, I'm afraid I've got no idea when he'll be back. Oh. Well, possibly Mr. Breacher. I believe he represents him, does he not? Yes, he does, sir, but he's very busy at the moment, sir. Oh, I don't think he would be busy. I'm sure that if he knew I was here, he would be doing mm -hmm. This is a matter of Yes, sir, but you leave what is it, Hans? What is it? Oh, uh, this gentleman was looking for Mr. De Silva, so I've uh, told him that... Mr. Breacher? Yes? I wonder if you could spare me a few moments. Well, I'm afraid I'm extremely busy, and I never see anybody without an appointment. Uh, my card, sir. I'd be grateful if you could make this an exception. Well, I never really make exceptions at all, sir. So... Oh. Except possibly in matters like this. Well, oh, would you care to come in? Oh, thank you. Thank oh. you. I do sit down, Mr. Reader. <clears throat> I'm so sorry about all this. Uh, <laughs> I'm rather a fanatic, you know. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, now, <clears throat> how can I help you? As your clerk informed you, I wanted to see Mr. De Silva, but I understand he is a client of yours. Yes, that's true. We have acted for him from time to time. Do you happen to know where I can contact him? Well, no, I'm afraid not. You see, he travels about a good deal. May I inquire the reason for this interest by the public prosecutor? Well, it has come to our notice there are certain aspects of his business which um, call for investigation. Oh, really? Well, then it's just as well that you came to see me today. Why is that, sir? Well, because tomorrow I wouldn't be able to give you any information. You see, the fact is we've asked Mr. De Silva to find other lawyers. I see. Uh, would you be so good as to tell me why? Well, yeah, there's no secret about it. He's done nothing wrong, as far as we know. It's just that he was uh, constantly referred his clients to us, and we felt that we were becoming in the nature of sponsors of their business. Ah, uh, yes. I saw the letter you wrote to uh, Miss Bellman. Uh, yes, quite. It was becoming a regular occurrence, and we came to the conclusion it was undesirable. You are very wise, Mr. Bracher. Have you a record of the people who wrote to you from time to time, asking for your... Advice? Well, I know it's a curious thing to say, but we haven't. Oh. Yes, you see, that was one of the reasons we decided to give up this client. You see, three weeks ago, the file in which we kept all letters addressed to people who would uh, come to us for a reference about De Silva unaccountably disappeared. Oh, where was it kept? Well, in the safe. And one morning it was missing. And the circumstances were so mysterious, and my brother and I were so concerned that we applied to the syndicate to let us have a list of their clients. Which you have? Well, no. You see, our request was never complied with. 
Had the lock of your safe been tampered with? No, no, not as far as we could see. No. Well, did you report the matter to the police? Well, uh, well, I can't be sure. I, I don't know. I <laughs> leave all that sort of thing to my brother, you know. So no detective has been here to investigate the lot? No. No, no, I, I don't believe they did. I see. <clears throat> Is there anything else you can tell me about Mr. De Silva's business? Mm? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Oh, then I, I'm most obliged to you for your help. Not at all. I'm only sorry I wasn't able to tell you more. I'll show you out. Uh, thank you. There we are. <clears throat> thank you. Oh, uh, Hunt. Hunt, it's uh, getting rather late. I think you'd better go home. I'll lock up tonight. Oh, uh, thank you very much, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, Hunt. Good night. Good night. Uh, good night. Please forgive me. I didn't realise it was so late. I wonder if I might use your telephone. I have an engagement at the theatre. Yes, of course. Please do. Thank you. Could I speak to Miss Bellman, please? I'm sorry, sir. Miss Bellman's not here. No, she left early this afternoon. She had a private appointment. Well, is it very urgent? Well, you could contact her at her solicitors, um, Bracher and Bracher. Bracher and Bracher? Are you sure? At what time? I see. Uh, no, th uh, thank you. Uh, goodbye. Well, now, is everything all right? I was trying to reach Miss Bellman, but her office tells me she had an appointment with you. No, no, no. Miss Bellman had no appointment with me today, and no appointment in the future, to my knowledge. Oh, how very strange. Well, hardly strange, I would have thought. I mean, uh, she might have decided to go home instead. Uh, perhaps. Well, would you like to use the telephone again and see if she's there? No, it's... Uh... Most kind of her, but I think I will go and see for myself. As you wish. Good night. Mr. Reader. Is something wrong, Mr. Tuchin? Yes. What is the use of me cooking good food if you're not going to eat enough to keep a sparrow alive? Forgive me, Mrs. Tuchin. It is no reflection on your cooking, I assure you. I, I'm rather worried. Uh, it's that girl. I take it you are referring to Miss Bellman. Mm. I've seen you running after her. Oh, well, it's none of my business if you want to make a fool of yourself. Have no fear, Mrs. Hutchin. I shall do nothing of the sort. Miss Bellman is a very estimable young lady. Oh, I'm very glad to hear it. Please, Mrs. Hutchin, you do Miss Bellman an injustice. Oh, do I? Well, I can see what she's doing to you. I confess my thoughts tonight are somewhat occupied with Miss Bellman.
Uh, Rita here. Oh, uh, y yes, Inspector. Huh? No traces. You've tried all the hospitals, of course. I see. Nothing. Well, thank you, Inspector. to see you, Mr. Reader. Who is it? He did not choose to give his name. Show him in. Very well. Come along. Mr. Reader will see you now. Reader? That is my name. Ah. So you're the fellow who shopped Ike Walker, are you? Yes, I was instrumental in the apprehension of Mr. Ike Walker. Got a letter for you. Thank you. Sit down. From Ike Walker. That's right. Ike had it sent out a stir by a gent who was discharged yesterday. Don't mind, I think I'd better be going now. Stay where you are. Do you know what is in this? No. It's very odd. Dear reader, here is a bit of a riddle for you. What other people have got, you can have. I haven't got it, but it's coming to you. It's red hot when you get it, but you're cold when it goes away. Your loving friend, Ike Walker. Doing a 12-month stretch because you went on the witness stand and told a lot of lies. I think your friend is a little mad, isn't he? he ain't a friend of mine. Gent just asked me to bring it. On the contrary. He gave it to an once the prison. Before we were released at six o'clock this morning. Now, just a minute. Your name is Wilson. You have eight convictions for burglary, and you will no doubt have a ninth before the year is out. Oh, no, my nose is clean. I paid my debt to society. You've no right to threaten me. That is not a threat. It's a prophecy. I really don't know what to make of this letter. You read me this riddle. Sit down. Do as I tell you. Do not move till I come back.
Wilson, if you leave without my permission, I shall have you arrested and back inside before the day is out. Sit down. Thank you. Smallpox, of course. The letter is systematically infected. You know, Ike Walker is almost clever. It would have been quite easy to arrange this with one of the orderlies in the hospital. I didn't know about it, Gov. Honest. You gave yourself away in your anxiety not to touch it. However, you may go now. I think it is more than likely that you are already infected. What? That oil silk in which it was wrapped was no protection at all. There is a very good chance that you will have the disease in three days. You're not serious. And be dead in a week. when I left last night, Sir Jason. Yes, Reader's really obviously been working overtime. Where is he? Oh, oh, he hasn't come in yet, sir. Not in? I've got the Attorney General coming this morning. And what the devil's happened to him? Oh, oh, perhaps he's had an accident. An implausible hypothesis, Miss Withers. Oh. Reader has many irritating habits, but unpunctuality is not one of them. Oh. 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 Good morning, Miss Withers. Good morning, Mr. Reader. Jason has been asking for you. Thank you. Ah. Oh. Good morning, Sir Jason. You're late. On the contrary, Sir Jason. I was at the office at two o'clock this morning, which is several hours earlier than I usually arrive. You weren't here when I came in. I took the liberty of going home for breakfast and a shave. What the devil were you doing here at that time of the morning? Investigating the missing persons. I'm afraid I have to report another one. The 18th. Oh, yes, the charts. Very interesting. It serves to highlight the pattern. Few of them had any personal friends or relatives. They all have private means. They've all reported missing in the first ten days of the month. And the last time any of them seen was two or three days at the end of the preceding month. Yes, it's all very pretty, Rita. No doubt you work extremely well at two o'clock in the morning and we should even extend your hours I to allow... I particular interest at the moment, Sir Jason. The 18th disappearance Miss Bellman was a personal friend of mine. Oh? Uh -huh. Yes? Yeah. Miss Bellman received a telephone message yesterday afternoon. She left her office at 4.30 to keep an appointment and has not been seen since. Yes, well, such things do happen, uh, or so I'm told. She'd probably got a lover. A married man, I shouldn't wonder. Um, no, uh, I... I mean, I'm... I'm sure that that is not so. In any event, there are other aspects of her disappearance give cause for grave concern. Rita, you have a criminal mind. You see evil in everything. I have always said, Sister Jason. And the only conclusion I can draw from my study of these cases in question is that the missing persons are all victims of an unscrupulous murder plot. You have other evidence? A little. Miss Bellman made an investment. The details of that investment, she was asked by the investment company not to divulge. Hmm. Does sound a bit fishy. Thought had occurred to me, Sir Jason. I have now established that it applies to 14 of the 17 other missing persons. You know who's behind all this? I have my suspicion that it is a Mr. De Silvo. 
With your permission, Sir Jason, I should like to initiate... Certainly not, Rita. An investigation of this type is the work of the police and not this department. But, Sir Jason... However, as you were here so early this morning, uh, making up your chart, perhaps you'd better take the rest of the day off. You're very kind, Sir Jason. In. Oh, oh. Well? The Attorney General is here to see you, sir. Well, show him in, girl. Don't keep him waiting. Oh. Will you come this way, please, sir? Sir Harold Thorpe. Thorpe. How are you, my dear chap? <laughs> How good of you to come. Now, before I sit you down, I've got something of extreme interest to show you. In here, uh, now, look. Little chart. Shows every detail at a glance. I've long been trying to impress upon my staff the importance of statistical analysis in determining the pattern in certain types of crime. Oh, naturally, of course, one meets with some obstruction from the older members of the staff, but uh, as you can see, uh, the virtues are self-evident. There you have persons reported missing during the last eight months. Most impressive, Jason. I, I, I really must congratulate you. Oh, my dear chap, well, one must do uh, something to earn one's stipend. Mm -hmm. Come in. Ah, good morning, Mr. Reader. Uh, good morning. Come in. Now, have you any news of Mr. De Silva? Uh, that, sir, is why I've come to see you. Well, I'm afraid I haven't. He hasn't been in contact with us, and as far as I know, he hasn't been back to his office. I see. Then, as his lawyer, I think his, I should... Uh, former lawyer. Be that as it may. I came here to inform you that I have arranged for a police officer to be on duty outside his offices with instructions to arrest him the moment he returns. I'm afraid I'm completely in the dark, Mr. Reader. I mean, of what is he suspected? Is his syndicate a fraud? I know of nothing more fraudulent. You have evidence, of course. I shall have. I intend to obtain the necessary authority to search his office and his papers. And I have no doubt that I shall find all the evidence that I require. Now, just a moment, Mr. Reader. Just a moment. As Mr. De Silva's lawyer... A former lawyer, I think you said. Well, I've already told you that we haven't been able to contact him about that matter. And until we do, I think it's only proper that we should protect his interest. Uh, that is a matter for you to decide. Exactly. And I think I also have the right to know on what grounds you propose to apply for this search warrant. On the grounds that I have reason to suspect that Mr. De Silva has committed a felony. Well, can't you be more specific? Uh, that is all I intend to say at the present. But your client has got to tell a very plausible story and produce indisputable proof of his innocence to have any hope of escape. Uh, should you re-establish contact with him, I suggest it will be in his interest for you to advise him to get in touch with me immediately. Just a moment, Mr. Reader. Just I will moment. not keep you. I'm sure you have a lot to do. Good day. Hunt. Hunt, will you get my brother on the telephone immediately? Oh, uh, very good, sir. Hello? Ernest? Yes, it's Joseph here. Yeah. Now, look, uh, Mr. Reed has been here again looking for De Silva. What? What? He intends to arrest him. Sir Jason, I wish to apply to a magistrate for a warrant to search De Silva's office. That is a serious step, Reader. The law requires reasonable grounds for suspicion. I am aware of that, Sir Jason. The point is, are your suspicions reasonable? Or are you allowing your concern for Miss Bellman to influence your judgment? Well, as yet I have no positive evidence against De Silva. It would be dishonest of me to pretend otherwise. Mm. Uh, nevertheless, I am convinced I can find all the proof I require in his office. Oh, very well, Rita. I have given you the day off. I do not wish to know what you are doing with it. I quite understand, Sir Jason.
Well, you're not concentrating, Ernest. What? Oh, no. Yeah. Check. Oh. <laughs> Look here, Joseph. Are you sure he'll come? Oh, yes, he'll come. When he heard that De Silva was here, he couldn't wait to put the phone down fast enough. Yes, but he ought to be here by now. Hmm? Ah, there. On the R, exactly. That'll be him. Ah. Yes, I think so. All right, all right, for heaven's sake. Fuss. Checkmate, Joseph. <laughs> Well, now, come along in, Mr. Reader. Come in, come in. Sure. I'd like uh, to introduce you to my brother, Ernest. Ernest. <laughs> Mr. Reader, delighted to meet you. You're, you're rather taller than I imagined. How do you do? Uh, where is Mr. De Silva? He's lying down at the moment. Just a slight headache. Perhaps you would be good enough to take me to him. Yes, of course. Now, please come with me, would you? Thank you. Mr. Reader, let's up these stairs. <coughs> there we are. <coughs> You'll find him in there somewhere. Thank you. What the devil? Help! Open the door! Mr. Reader. Miss Bellman. Thank heavens I found you. <laughs> had the thing soundproofed. I can't hear. I can't hear a thing of what they're saying in there. Can we, can we start it now, Joseph? No, 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 not yet, Ernest, not oh, yet. Why not, Joseph? No, I you not. really must try and be not quite so impatient, Ernest. After all, we've still got time for another little game. If you insist. Oh, I do insist, Ernest, I do. Oh. Yes. I must have my revenge. How long have they kept you in this prison? I, I don't know. About an hour, I think. There is another room beyond that door. I spent the day and the night in there. It's very strong. No keyhole. There must be bolts outside. Yes, there are. I noticed. Great heavy bolts. But even if you could open it, there'd be no escape. Why? What is on the other side? Um, a servant's kitchen and a coal cellar. But there are thick iron bars at the windows. Then we must be patient. What is going to happen? You must just wait and see, my dear. I've no doubt that Mr. Breacher has some further surprise in store for us. Oh, I'm so sorry to have got you into this terrible predicament. My dear Miss Bellman, please do not distress yourself. I am overjoyed to have found you alive. It is all entirely my fault. My greed in seeking too large a return for my investment. No. There are many legitimate enterprises which have provided a similar return. I cannot allow you to reproach yourself. Well, what are we going to do? Bury them like the others. Oh, no, no, no. I, I mean about the business. Oh. Well, I suppose we could retire. Yes, it's true, but it seems a shame to end such a lucrative enterprise. Yes. What do you suggest? Well, I've been thinking about South America. South America? Hmm. The Inca Rubber Corporation. How does that sound? Oh, yes. Very profitable. Yes, doesn't it? And I'm told that the climate there is really rather splendid. Ah, 
good for growing orchids, then. I've always wanted to try my hand at orchids. I know, Ernest. You know, I rather fancy a sea trip. You know, you never know, we might meet some of our future investors. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. so we might. <laughs> You are very calm, Miss Bellman. I, I wasn't when I was here alone. I confess it took a great deal of will on my part to avoid panic. It does you great credit. You are a remarkable young woman, even though I know so little about you. There isn't much to know. I live at home very quietly with my mother. And your father? Oh, he was a doctor. He died five years ago. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. What of you? Me? Oh, I am a, a very uninteresting person. If you'll forgive me saying so, you've always seemed to me to be a very interesting gentleman. Well, Miss Bellman, you, you flatter me. I... Mr. Reader, what are they going to do? I don't know. I wish I did. Well, now, a little more Madeira, Ernest, hmm? Yes, yes, thank you, Joseph, but isn't it time yet? Oh, no, no, not quite. You know, I must say that man Reader's most unpleasant. I took an instant dislike to him. You know, he was almost rude to me in the office today. Yes, no breeding. I could tell that at once. Oh, none at all, none at all. Just a jumped-up clerk, nothing more. You know, it amuses me to think of him in there planning his escape, and all to no avail. But they do say he's very clever, Joseph. Yes, but he's not quite clever enough for us, Ernest. He walked straight into our trap. It was only necessary to find the right bait. Mr. Reader, may yes? I ask you a question? Certainly. Oh, don't answer it if you don't wish to. But I have often wondered, were you never married? Married? Me? Alas, no. Oh, but you must have met... Uh, I mean, hasn't there ever been anyone you wanted to marry? When I was a young man. But she married someone else and somehow since then. Oh. You see, I have never been very good at making social conversation. It is a great drawback sometimes responsible for much unhappiness in this world. Are you unhappy? Me? Good gracious, no, I... I've always been much too busy. Listen. What is it? Rachel's surprise, I suspect. Mr. Reader, is it my imagination? Oh, no, but the ceiling's moving. It don't crush us. Recognize it, Joseph? Uh, yes, yes. Nutcracker sweet, of course. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yes, I see what you mean, yes. <laughs> yes, it's really rather appropriate, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> A pity they can't hear it. I doubt if they would appreciate our sense of humour. <laughs> There's nothing I can do to save us. But I, I would so like to see their faces now, dear. There's someone there. Stay back. Put on that. Wilson, what on earth you did? Well, I got it's a fair cop. Who is it? Don't worry. We're safe. Safe? Look, what is going on here? Oh, never mind. How did you get in? I'm through this window here. That's a very professional job. Come on, quickly. I thought I'd 
Oh, no, 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 I tell you. You've been so brave. Wilson, what on earth are you doing here? I followed you. Why? Why? Because I walk us and I've got to get you, and that's why. Well, you have got me. And in so doing, you have inadvertently saved both our lives. Saved your lives? So I owe you a favour, and I'll skip fast. Oh, I promise you won't say anything to anybody. I assure you the police will never know. No, it's not only the police. You don't understand. Oh, I'm sorry I did. No, I guess I'd walk. If ever he finds out when he gets out, I'm as good as a gunner. We were saved by an unidentified man. I never saw you before in my life. Now go fast! Oh, thank you, God. My dear, you're... You're cold. Hey, excuse me, God. What? You were joking about that letter. What oh, letter? What? The smallpox? Po y yes, yes, I was joking. Oh, God bless you, God. Here, you're shivering. Take my coat. No. No, you'll catch cold. I insist. Do not worry about me. I never catch cold. <laughs> Time for your medicine, <coughs> Mr. Reader. Uh, I, I'll, I'll take it later, Mrs. I will see that you do. Not that I have any faith in doctor's medicines. I've got some nice Spanish onions boiled in milk for your dinner. They'll do you a power of good. I, I love onions, Mrs. Uchin. Aye, well, you've got to take them. You've only yourself to blame. A grown man like you coming home like that. Now, how could you lose your overcoat and your jacket? I, I tell you, Mrs. Uchin, I did not lose... I did not lose them. I, I left them at the office. <coughs> oh, now, Mr. Reader, do you expect me to believe a st here, that'll be the doctor. He said he'd call in and see how you were. <coughs> Mr. Reader, it's that young lady to see you again. Uh, Miss Bellman? I believe that is her name. Uh, ask her, Indian. Do not await them. Very well. Will you step this way, please? Oh, how are you? Uh, slight chill. Oh, don't come too near or you'll catch it. Oh, Mr. Reader, you should never have given me your coat. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Uchin. You may go now. I've uh, come to take down your report for the Public Prosecutor's Department. But it's very good of you. Oh, it's the least I could do. You haven't drunk your medicine? No, I, I... Come on now. Drink it up. You've got to get better quickly. I shall miss you in the mornings going to work. Will you? Will you really? Uh, to the Director of Public Prosecutions. Further to my investigation of the Mexico City Investment Syndicate, I have discovered that De Silva was a false name used by Joseph and Ernest Brecher for the purpose of... <laughs>